uh, thank you. Uh, I want to thank the Lord. I want to also thank Pastor for his time uh, for giving me to read from the psalm. Uh, we're going to read from Psalm 110. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Psalm 110 and we can read it together. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle, arrayed in holy splendor. Your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge the nations heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. He will drink from a brook along the way, so he will lift his head high. Amen. So this is a really powerful psalm. Uh, it's also a short psalm, but there's a lot that is inside the psalm, which we will be talking about. Uh, David here is talking about someone with some royalty as a king and as someone as a priest forever. We can see in verse 2, it says, Rule in the midst of your enemies. And in verse 4, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So we have seen some of these references before when we are studying Hebrews. Um, also, there are some references in uh, Genesis, in Matthew, and Revelation. This psalm is a messianic psalm, meaning it's talking about the Messiah, who is Jesus, and it is a prophetic psalm because David is hearing from the Lord and is speaking some prophetic words about Jesus. So we have to remember who David is. David is the one who was anointed by God. He was chosen by God. And God is speaking to David. And, you know, uh, David is saying these words and it's being written down. And this is the psalm that we're reading. So as Christians, we know that. And as Jewish people, they know that David is anointed. But... The verse 1 says, the Lord says to my Lord, and at that line, there's a little disagreement between Christian and Jewish people, but the New Testament kind of reveals who this is. So that's what we're going to uncover today when you're reading Psalm 110, and then we're going to move down and talk about the other stuff. So Matthew 22, 41 to 46 says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, what do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David. They replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day no one dared to ask him any more questions. See, here in the context of this chapter, Dave, uh, Jesus is asking the Pharisees a question. And actually first what happened was the Sadducees came in this chapter and they try to ask Jesus a lot of questions. They try to confuse him and try to find some fault in his words to use against him. But Jesus silenced them. Next, the Pharisees came and they tried to do the same thing. But Jesus silenced them and he asked them a question. He literally quotes Psalm 110 asking the Pharisees, how can the Messiah be the son of can be David and his sons. To me, when I was reading this, I found it so appalling that the Son of God is standing in front of the teachers of the laws and is saying to them that you missed what the Spirit was saying to David, that you're messed it up. See, David is only a man, but Jesus is the Son of God. And he knew it when his father was speaking to him. It says, the Lord says to my Lord, God the Father spoke to Jesus, and Jesus knew that this was talking about him. He was revealing his identity as the Son of God and also God the Son. In Hebrews 1, 13, it writes, To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Here again is a reference to Psalm 110. And this whole chapter is talking about God the Father speaking to Jesus and saying that he's giving all authority to Jesus. When we were studying Hebrews Bible study, the theme that pastor introduced was 
that Jesus is supreme, is superior. He is superior to the angels, he is superior to man, and he's given all authority. In verse 2 of that Hebrews chapter, it says, In these last days God spoke to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the universe. So in the context of this chapter, Hebrews 1, 13, and also Psalm 110 is talking about Jesus. God did not say to the angels, he didn't say to man to sit at my right hand, but he did say it to Jesus. We also know that when Jesus was crucified, he resurrected, and when he ascended to heaven, he said, I'm going to sit at the right hand of my father. So he's sitting at the right hand of the father, and he will return again to rule this earth. Verse 2 to 3 says, The Lord will exalt your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on, the, on your day of battle. Arrayed in holy splendor, your, your young men will come to you like dew from the, from the morning's womb. Again, uh, this is a prophetic word, uh, saying that Jesus will come again and rule the earth and his people in his second coming. We can see the authority and the power is given to Jesus. And the church will see the splendor and glory and will join with him willingly. So we're reading Revelations, and I think we're going to get to those portions in Revelations. Um, it's going to show Jesus returning to the earth to rule, coming with holy splendor and his people rising up. In verse 4 of Psalm 110, uh, it's kind of interesting. It says, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Again, in Hebrews Bible study, we kind of talked about Melchizedek. And an interesting thing is that not much is known about Melchizedek and his ancestry. And the Bible only talks about Melchizedek in three, um, talks about Melchizedek in three places. In Genesis, when Melchizedek blesses Abraham, in Psalm 110 saying that Jesus or the Messiah is the, from the order of Melchizedek, and Hebrews when the writer is comparing Jesus to Melchizedek. So it's important to know who Melchizedek is because Jesus is the priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So who is Melchizedek? Uh, so Melchizedek is introduced in Genesis um, after Abraham rescued Lot from being held captive after Sodom was captured by an enemy king. The Bible says that Melchizedek was a king of Salem and the priest of the Most High God. And he came and blessed Abraham. So as a side note, uh, in Hebrews, it explains that Melchizedek's name means righteousness. So his name means righteousness. And the place he ruled was Salem, which means peace. So the king of righteousness and the king of peace came and blessed Abraham. And Abraham gave 10% tithe to Melchizedek. So there's a lot of things that we can take from this passage, but I wanted to focus on one thing, is that Melchizedek in the time of Abraham was a true priest of the Lord Most High. But he's not from the order of the Levi or the high priesthood of Aaron. Here we can see that actually Melchizedek's priesthood predated the priesthood of the pre uh, dated the priesthood of the Levitical priesthood. Melchizedek was a priest because God appointed him to be the priest of the Most High God. His priesthood was superior, and what I mean by that was before the priesthood lineage of Abraham. We can also see that he blessed Abraham and Abraham gave him tithe. So when we go back to verse 4, it says, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This verse is saying that Jesus is the priest forever because like Melchizedek, God chose Jesus. He is superior to all priests. He is not limited by lineage. So he didn't have to be a priest from the Levitical line. He, it says that he's the key, uh, priest. So in the tribe of Israel, there is um, many tribes. And he is from the line of Judah, his kingship. And the priest is not from the Levitical priest. So he didn't have to be part of that. He's not limited by death because the Levitical priest, had, they died. And another priest took their place. But he's not limited by anything but he is the priest forever. 
He is the priest who is true and forever. So Hebrews 5, um, 5 to 6 says, In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. He said in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So let's. So this morning as we're joining in worship, let's worship our God because our God is a priest forever. He's a high priest that won't go weary, that won't faint. He is a priest that is forever for us. So I'm now going to be ending on the verse 5, 6, and 7. It says, The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge the nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. He will drink from a brook along the way, and so he will lift his head high. Here it is talking about the return of Jesus and the judgment he will bring with him to those who are evil, those who are ruled by the earth and not led by God. We know that Jesus will come again and he will gather his church. So as Christ followers, we do not have to fear in the time of judgment. It says in verse 3 that when he comes, we will gather with him as he rules over the enemies. But this time when he comes, he will crush the enemy for good. And he will be sitting on the throne forever as the one king, the only priest and the victor of this battle. The Lord will have the final word and the final victory. Amen. So let's just rejoice uh, that we belong to the one true God. He is our king. He is our priest. And when he returns, he will be victorious and we will be gathered along beside him. This is the promise of our God and our hope. So may you be blessed with this word and uh, thank you for this time.